Rachel's story starts in Mungwala, a village in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Her face is covered because the people who killed her father-in-law and kidnapped her husband could still be looking for her. She fled the country seven years ago after two clans engaged in clashes that saw her family fall apart. Rachel came to Uganda with her daughter and two sisters. Life was not easy. She tried to make ends meet doing all kinds of things, but something always happened to take her back to zero. I start selling also those big things, moving around with necklaces, you know. Life had become a little bit easier, trying my best to move around with other women. But it was not enough, you know. It was not enough. It reached some time. I got the, uh, I met those people of KCC. They took everything I had. That thing, I just went to buy them. Then I did not even sell one, even one necklace. Then they took it all from me, asking me if I have cards which permit me to move around with those things. No cards. She was forced to find an income selling her body. A friend who had taken her in would not pay all the bills while she sat around all day. She had failed to get any other kind of work. Prostitution was the last thing she thought she would ever do, but she did it anyway. We could go, sometimes you go with guy, you say, okay, well, let us go. You go with him, then when you reach there, you find there are three. Then all, they use you. New at the trade, she soon fell pregnant. She could not find the money to have an abortion, and so she kept the baby. He is now four years old. Sometimes she wonders what she will tell the boy when the questions start. Even don't want to think about it, you know. But sometimes if I see that child, I, I wonder, one day what should I tell him? Maybe he will ask me who is my, my father, something like that. I don't know exactly what, which kind of answer will I give him. Rachel is just one of thousands of urban refugees who stay in urban areas. Instead of the settlement camps, many refugees are taken to. They, do, they don't have access to what other refugees in, in the settlements are getting. The urban refugee has to fend for, for himself. They need as much help as they can get, but most people do not know that. Landlords are not friendly, and few people care to understand their plight. They do not understand that refugee life is not necessarily permanent. I would want to see many of our agencies trying to engage the urban refugees into that line so that they become self-reliant. I'm seeing a situation where we have a refugee who is in position to change their lives and eventually change the lives of many of their dependents because they have dependents. Uh, I'm seeing, a, I'm, I want to say, an urban refugee who is in, in, in capacity to live in a decent place of, of accommodation, who can afford basic necessaries for, for their families and themselves. Most of the refugees that come into Uganda come from DRC, Somalia, Eritrea, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan and Kenya. The Refugee Law Project has received over 2,000 refugees in the last six months. They come with fears looking for hope, but they do not have it easy here. They do not easily find employment, health care, accommodation, and those that are given work are exploited. The language is also a problem for many. Seven years down the road, Rachel is coping. She has learned to speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> and she has found a neighborhood where she is not treated like a threat. She shares this one-roomed house with her two sisters and her son and daughter. Going back to the DRC is not an option on her table just now. Josephine Karunji Musisi, NTV.